Check out this market here, this, uh, this glorified food court. Uh, that sounds a little snarky, but it's actually a really cool spot. They got like five restaurants in this uh, market, this food court here, whatever you want to call it. We're in the Cosmopolitan and this food court thing is called Block 16. I went with Hottie B's chicken, hot chicken sandwich thing. Side of mac and cheese, uh, pretty damn delicious. I already ate it, that was the before shot. No after shot, it's all gone and uh, I'm pretty stuffed, but yeah, pretty damn good. I'm holding this microphone here because it's kind of kind of noisy. That sort of defeats the purpose of a lavalier mic. I might as well just be holding a microphone like a, a newscaster, local news, reporting to you live from the Cosmopolitan here in Las Vegas. Right, so uh, today is Saturday, Saturday evening. Last spoke to you, uh, coming to you from Monday. That was the day of the Run It Up announcements, Tuesday. The very next day was a live stream on Twitch. Went over to Run It Up Studios and did a live stream. Played some poker, played on WSOP.com and uh, just some low stakes. We played 25, 50 cent and 50 cent dollar. A couple tables running and uh, just chatting away with Jason Somerville. Yeah, yeah but I feel like, like, right, let's see what you got, Andrew. I, I, feel like, see. Yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like I'm in your world here. Entertaining you, to watch. Do you like slam the desk here? No. All that stuff? No. no. I've Lex never had Lex does. Lex does a little bit, which is fine. You know, people will kind of feel that connection. I right, am just gonna check rip it. I think that's what I'm gonna go for here since it's gonna be stack sizes here. Yeah, yeah, I'm in. Trapped him! It's just a cupcake, dude! Thank Come you. and get it! And then little does he know, the trap is right there. I'm just well, gonna rip it in. I think that's okay. The only reason why I think that ripping is not as good as betting a little bit smaller is that this kind of looks like a please fold. There you go. Get I agree, done. putting money in the pot is the right decision. Hmm. 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 I think I'm just gonna, just gonna do it. Snap call. Ooh, Fine, hello. Four. Hello. <laughs> wow, life is good. Andrew Nimi, team run it up, run good. When he just picks that size, it's like. It's best pot. Yeah. I would not have folded, I don't think. I think yeah. I would have believed it. Look at that! He showed the bluff, dude! Hey, you wanted to get it on stream. I think it's with everything available, I think it's just too good. I agree. Straight flush. The old straight flush. Damn, where's the bell when you need it? And he did just bluff us and show it on stream, humiliating us in front of Twitch chat. Let's see if we can just somehow get the maximum. What does he have? He has a pen of hearts? Oh, yeah. There you go. There we go. It's just a straight flush, just Mr. Just a straight Jones. flush. Pick your bluff. Oh, you have a jack? I got a jack too! Jack A of spades, lol! <laughs> That's how I play if I was live poker. Wait for the meetup game tomorrow when I do that. Oh, you have a jack? Can you slow roll the meetup games? I'm, I'm gonna. You can. No, I'm not. You I'm can. Not you can do whatever you want. Don't worry. I've actually really been enjoying the live stream stuff so far. Uh, sure, it's a little awkward. Uh, it's gonna take some getting used to. Um, it's not quite as simple as this. I can't stop and think about what I'm gonna say on the live stream. And I definitely can't just snap my fingers and shoot over to a drone scene. being said the upsides are that we can actually interact in real time which is cool you guys can come over to the channel ask me anything you want and uh, any topic and I'll fire away whatever answers I can come up with and we can also play poker in real time that's a little bit scary too uh, you guys can see me make all my ridiculous mistakes in real time um, and online poker not exactly my strong suit either but whatever uh, for now just gonna play like probably some low stakes hang out in that like 50 cent dollar range I figure um, that's sort of a range where most of you guys are going to be playing your uh, whatever stakes you guys are going to be playing. So try and keep it like a similar vibe of like low to mid stakes, at least for now. And eventually uh, switch in some tournaments here and there, whatever you guys like to watch. And also probably do some IRLs around Las Vegas, try some of that stuff as well. Ended up winning a couple hundred dollars on that live stream uh, across those two tables. So, right, so that was Tuesday. Uh, Carrying on with the recap of this past week, Wednesday was the meetup game. 
pretty fun night. We put together five tables of 2-5 over at the Westgate. Interesting hand came early on when I looked down at King, Queen of Spades uh, from early middle position. I make a 20 to go. Player on my left and the big blind call. So three ways to a flop of King, 6-3, rainbow. Board so dry. So I make it $25 to go. Player on my left folds and the big blind calls. Turn is the seven of clubs and the big blind checks it over to me. I decide to make what's probably a non-standard and maybe suboptimal play and check it back here. The obvious straight draw of 6-4 uh, comes in. It's the only real obvious draw on this board available. I think I should probably bet here and maybe balance uh, with some backdoor flush draws that I pick up. Uh, reasons for checking might be that I don't think I'm going to get three streets anyway, and I can try and pot control versus that obvious uh, straight draw that might have arrived. So after action checks through on the turn, we see the ace of diamonds on the river. Pretty interesting spot when my opponent in the big line leads out for like $130. He actually overbets the pot in this, uh, in this spot. So this is a really interesting spot, I think, because he's basically repping a very strong hand, uh, two pair at worst could be repping even better than that. Uh, the board is so dry, so I wouldn't expect him to put in a check raise on the flop too often with a set. Um, could easily just flat call there and could have the straight, as mentioned. So this ace should be better for my range than it should be for his, so I would normally expect him to check it over to me. I was planning on calling almost any bet size here, but when he makes it that sizing, uh, over bets the pawn, I'm not really loving it. So I don't know, I just decided to fold the hand there and, and Thoughts welcome on that hand, not really too sure. Um, but given that price, I don't know, decided to let it go. Later on, there was a pretty interesting hand where a player in early position, not under the gun, but another early position, limps in. And I looked down at pocket eights. I raised it up to 25, and there's either two or three callers before the limper puts in the back raise. The limp re-raise up to $175. We're somewhere in the neighborhood of $15 to $2,000 effective. And... Uh, that's one factor that leads me to calling. The other one is a little bit more obvious that folding is boring. So I think the other players fold me behind me and we go heads up to a flop, which comes pretty favorable for the pocket eights. Comes eight high. Super dry board, super dry flop. And uh, when he checks it over to me, I just decide to check it back since that board is so dry and we have it just absolutely crushed here. This could be a leak. Uh, I've noticed I do this here and there uh, in different situations where I just decided to check it back where I could definitely go for value and it's definitely debatable. But once again, I check it back here and play it a little bit deceptively. If he does have ace-king here, I'm at least giving him a free card and trying to allow it to catch up a little bit. If he happens to have an overpair, well, we're probably gonna get a bunch of money no matter what. So we see a jack of spades on the turn, which I believe puts up a backdoor flush draw. By the way, we've had somewhere in the neighborhood of four beers at this point, so there could be uh, some slight deviations from what actually happened in this hand, but I believe I have most of the details, if not all of them. Anyway, I believe my opponent checks again, and obviously going to go for some value here, and I bet $150. My opponent makes the call, and we are off to a river card, which is the seven of clubs. Checks it over to me again. Time to size it up, and I think I bet somewhere in the neighborhood of $525. All the draws missed, uh, so we should be slightly polarizing ourselves a little bit, uh, representing either a, a missed draw or a big hand. As you can see from this footage, who was supplied to us by none other than Poker Crowd himself, uh, my opponent does in fact go ahead and make the call. So by this point, we know we have the best hand. We go ahead and flip it over, and my opponent mucks what. He later said was pocket kings. So pretty interesting that he decided to just check all the whole way. Um, but uh, yeah, as mentioned, when they do have the overpair in that situation, he's going to lose a bunch of money. So I don't think checking back on the flop uh, cost us too much. But you never know. Maybe we could have gotten even more. Shout out to Poker Kraut for uh, supplying that footage and for coming to the game. So we found run good uh, all over the place in this session, almost for throughout the entire session. At the end of the night, uh, almost the end of the night, on my last table, look down at ace-king off suit, make it $20 to go. Uh, player in either the small blind or the big blind raises it up, puts in a three bet to $75, I believe. He's about 500 effective here, so I'm going to put in a four bet and happily stack off um, being 100 big blinds effective. So I decided a sizing of, I think, $205. I want to leave some inkling in his mind that might have him thinking that he has some fold equity. With about $300 behind, I could be doing this with, uh, you know, maybe like uh, ace four suited, ace five suited, something in that range, something in that neighborhood where I can put in the four bet and fold. Don't want to make it look like he doesn't have any fold equity with the money behind. Anyway, he does go ahead and jam it all in there. Uh, I go ahead and snap call and ask if he has a pair. He says, no, he does not. 
I go ahead and show, and uh, it turns out we are up against Ace Queen of Diamonds in really good shape here for another big pot in this 2 5 game. Uh, the flop, however, gives us sweat and brings out two diamonds. The turn immediately has us drawing dead uh, on the third diamond. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but not too sad about the happenings throughout the evening. Managed to book a win of about $1,400 in this game, uh, which is a nice change of pace for me in these meetup games. You might remember that $3,000 loss down in Austin. You might remember that was preceded by a seven dollars or $800 loss in Seattle uh, just before that. So actually managed to book a nice win in a meetup game and uh, lots of fun had along the way. Jason Somerville, the man himself, came out, hung out, played some live 2-5 doesn't happen too often in Jason Somerville lands. And he brought the crew with him as well. Uh, some of the guys from Team Run It Up, they were handing out swag bags, uh, dropping those in to some splash pots that were going on during the bomb pots. You're usually on that side of this walk, right? You usually hang on the, the super book area. Yes. This yes. time you came to join us here in the poker room. It was, this was awesome, you know. I It feels very familiar to me, like very Run It Up Reno-esque in terms of the vibe. That room was very friendly, a lot of like handshakes, smiles. People are really excited. This was our first time doing a live event together. And That's right. uh, yeah, I think this was an awesome turnout. Hopefully you guys are happy with uh, how it's went. Uh, I'm happy with how good I'm running. Yes, you uh, do have a castle over there. Hopefully the fans have seen that. I think I'm up like, Bucks. Must be nice. I lost like almost exactly $420. No joke. Announced the partnership like two days ago. Yeah. Uh, we've already had a live stream. We've been in the blog. He's been in the blog before. Now he's at a live event. So. It's amazing. Really. We're just getting started here. It's so cool. What are we going to do tomorrow? This will be the first day I haven't seen you. Should we come over and like watch a football game or something? I don't know. I, I do need a little help with my laptop. So maybe I'll come see you guys or something. Maybe. Maybe it'll be weird if I don't see you at this point. So uh, yeah, man. So right. much fun. Uh, can't wait for the next one. All right. So as mentioned, that was Wednesday evening. Thursday was recovery, uh, as is usually the case on these meetup games when I have too much fun and too many beers, which I should probably figure out how to tone that down a little bit. Probably a good idea. Friday was a session. Went back over to the win, played some 2-5 over there. I guess my general approach to Vegas uh, poker these days is keep an eye on the Bellagio 510, see how many games are running. If it doesn't look like there's that many running, win 2-5 might be the play. That was the case on Friday evening. Started my session somewhere around 7.30 p.m. Wrapped up my session somewhere around 4 a.m., I think. Currently 4.05 in the morning. A Little bit on the tired side, you could say. Hand of the night was when I opened pocket sevens from under the gun playing two five no limit hold'em here. Three callers, so four ways to a flop. Jack six four with two clubs. Action checks all the way through and we see a deuce, offsuit deuce on the turn. The big blind bet's $45, I decide to call. Could have the best hand here a decent percentage of the time. And the player behind me calls, I believe he's on the button. River looks pretty good, it's an offsuit seven. This time the big blind checks and I go for value to the tune of $175. The big blind, ships it all in there. Not a whole lot more. I want to say maybe like $250 more, something like that, over my 175. Big blind folds back to us and pretty tough here. Could have a worse set that he was slow playing. Uh, it's pretty unlikely that he has a straight here. He was on the button, so anything is possible. Uh, he could have some suited gappers there, I guess. I mean, he either had to turn the straight and have it already and not raise, or he had to call with a gutter. I guess eight five of clubs is possible. You know, pocket sevens. It's a set. Who likes folding sets? I don't. So, I don't. I make the call. And uh, sure enough, he has 8-5 of diamonds. So he drills that one, and uh, we're not able to recover for the rest of the evening. Not the whole way, anyway. I did get pocket aces in uh, a straddled hand. I can't remember if I had the straddle on. It's pretty late, but anyway, there was a couple limps, and I was either in the straddle or the big line, and I raise it up. One of the limpers back raises, and uh, he makes it like 100 and 10 or 115. Folds back to me and I put in the four bet to $250 and he calls. Plop comes super dry, 10 4, 4 rainbow. I bet 150 and he rips it in there for about 450 or 500. Happy to make the call and uh, he says kings or aces are good. Board runs out pretty safe for us and aces are in fact good versus his pocket queens. So 
wrap it up here. Uh, pretty long session. Well, not a long session, but a long day. I was up at like 9.30 this morning. Finished the session uh, in for 2,300, out for $2,078. So we lose a couple hundred bucks or whatever. Going to bed now. All right, as mentioned, today is Saturday. It's Saturday evening at the moment. Time to make our next move. Time to make the short walk on over to the Bellagio right next door. Let's go see how those 510 games look over at the Bellagio. Hop into the next session. Let's go. How do we look? I'll tell you how I feel. Pretty exhausted. Uh, it wasn't even that long of a session, relatively. It's only 3.14 in the morning at the moment. So we ended up having a pretty action heavy game over here at the Bellagio on a Saturday evening. Early on we found pocket aces and managed to get three streets of value on King Jack, seven, two clubs, three turn and nine river, 40, 140, 290. So pocket aces hold up there. Pretty shortly after that, the pocket kings do not work out. Raise it up to $30, I believe, pre-flop. Flop comes ace high, but it's all diamonds, and we do have the king of diamonds. The small blind, who called us pre-flop, checks it. I just check it back. Turn is an offsuit 10. This time he bets $50, and I call. River, I think, is mostly a brick, and he checks it. I check it back. Up against ace 10 of spades in that one. Pretty soon after that is when the real fun started taking place. Sometimes you're blessed, you know, with a lineup and uh, a player who just likes to have a good time at the table, you know? Playing every single hand, usually blind at least first, coming in for a raise, doesn't really matter what those two cards are. And uh, doing it openly and admittedly, and that was the case tonight. Usually when that happens, you're just gonna have to hold on to those reins, embrace variance, so early on with this dynamic uh, in full effect, there was an under the gun limp and I looked down an ace king offsuit. I make it 40 to go. The aforementioned player calls on the button, limper call. So three ways to a flop, which comes a seven, six rainbow. Under the gun player checks, I bet $80 and the player on the button jams all in. Under the gun player folds and it's back to us. This is just a snap call, obvious fist pump snap call spot. Yeah, he had been uh, not only playing every hand and doing it blind, but putting in some massive bets and raises and all, all across the board, all things of the sort. I say all that uh, to preface the fact that after the turn and river run out, we are up against it versus 7-6 offsuit. Um, yeah, that doesn't work out for us. We get uh, we get whacked in this hand. Things are gonna happen. These things are going to happen for sure in these uh, types of situations. And you just need to reach into that pocket, find a reload, and uh, on to the next hand. That next hand comes with a straddle on and the aforementioned player in this hand raises it up to $30 which is a legal raise here at the Bellagio. You can go from 20 to 30 when the straddle is on. The player on the button puts in a three bet and he raises it up to 140. We are in the small blind looking down at pocket queens and it's an interesting dynamic because I want to put in a four bet. I obviously want to get some more money into the pot. Um, the player who initially raised it to $30, 99% did that blind. 
I'm just gonna take my chances here because I don't want to just play a small plot. I'm trying to play a big pot, trying to get the money when I can, when I have a good premium hand such as Pocket Queen. So I put in the four bet. I make it $320 to go, which is a little bit on the small side and probably a little bit too small in my opinion. Um, as mentioned, I don't want to scare away the uh, initial raiser, initial raiser, who probably hadn't looked at his cards yet. Um, but it's probably not going to matter too much anyway, which, whichever sizing I choose, as long as I don't go too crazy. Anyway, 320, and sure enough, both the initial raiser and the three better make the call. We're off to a flop three ways, which is coming down pretty favorable for these pocket queens. Queen, seven, six with two hearts. I think about it for a few seconds and I uh, pick up a little bit of a tell from my opponent uh, who is in early position. He looks at his uh, chips. He does a little chip glance. That's kind of a tell. Looks like someone wants to bet uh, when they do that, generally. I don't put a ton of weight into tells, but this one looked pretty reliable. So I decided to check it and my opponent in early position does in fact put in a bet. It's like $500. The player on the button goes ahead and folds. It's only another maybe $500 behind after that 500. So I raise all in and he's uh, not going anywhere. He makes the call. Very likely that he's drawing near dead. I just turned my hand over right away and he says, yep, you got it. And pretty straightforward from there. We're taking this one down, good size pot. So that makes up for that ace king debacle plus a little bit more and we are well back into the black as a result of that hand. Up about $1,000 or so, somewhere in that neighborhood. One more interesting hand from this session uh, towards the end came when I opened up Jack-10, offsuit Jack-10 from, I wanna say, the hijack. I believe the button makes the call. Go heads up to a flop in which we flop a gutter on a 9-7 deuce flop. Pretty good flop to see about here with two overs plus a gutter ball, and uh, my opponent makes the call. Turns a good card for us. It's a jack of spades, which puts a backdoor flusher on board. I'm gonna go ahead and value bet it now. I bet $90 here on the turn, and once again, my opponent makes the call. River is a queen of spades, which brings in the backdoor flush. This time I decided to check it. I think it's gonna be tough to get value from too much worse. And my opponent puts out a bet of $150. Kind of a weird spot. Uh, not really loving it, but not really knowing what hands he could have here, where he never put in a raise at any point. Um, generally, people tend to put in a raise when there is a flush draw on board, and Lots of cards could come to sort of change the context of the board. Anyway, we're blocking straights. We are blocking Queen Jack. Wouldn't expect him to have Queen Jack. Wouldn't expect him to have a Queen on this board at any point. So, with the price being somewhat reasonable, I decided to make a call and uh, he shows us pocket deuces. So he played that one well. Unfortunate that we turn uh, top pair, which ends up not improving us whatsoever versus a flop set. Three of a kind is better than a pair. We get into this game for $2,500. Get out of this game for $3,175. According to my math, that's a profit of $675, which tough to complain about. Nothing wrong with a $600 profit on the evening, especially when you started out in the hole. So yeah, no complaints, but just feels like in a game where there's that much action, kind of looking forward to booking a, a really solid, nice win. But no control over these, these such things. Wasn't really that long of a session either. Handful, handful of hours. Anyway, I'm tired. Uh, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go to sleep, edit this video tomorrow, and um, yeah, move on. One more thing, I have an idea. You guys can let me know what you think about this idea. Uh, one thing that we haven't really covered too much of in the vlog, is the home game scene. I don't think there's that big of a home game scene here in Las Vegas, but I know for a fact there's a big home game scene in Los Angeles and elsewhere, other parts of the country. I've played in some home games in LA and I would love to uh, start capturing that a little bit more frequently um, on the blog. But I think it would also be really cool if we went to some unique home games and some unique locations. So this is where I need your guys' help. I will set up an email. I don't know, maybe it'll be something like vlogourgame at gmail.com. Send me some details about your home game. I would love to sort of capture some different home games that are especially unique uh, in whatever fashion you deem them to be unique. So my thoughts are that it's a really cool location, a really cool venue, house, condo, uh, event space, 
uh, a boat, anything of the sort. Uh, I've played in some different home games here and there and am completely open to your guys' thoughts and ideas. And if you're interested in having your home game appear in this blog, shoot me an email at that email address. Give me some ideas, send me some photos of the venue, anything you wanna share about the home game that you think makes it interesting and vlog worthy. All right guys, that's it. I'm out of here, going to sleep. Good night, see you next episode.